And I'm going to do to what's happening. Is I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how hot it is, but it is many degrees in here. Just going outside. It's beautiful. I've been struggling with drive-by wire. Now I'm starting to think it's the. I don't want to say it's the ECU because I think it's probably my wiring. But one minute I can get in the car, press the throttle pedal. Whoop, 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 whoop. If the engine was running. And it, it tracks pedal to throttle body. I've played with PID settings, everything is. And then I'll, I'll turn the car on again and it won't move. I don't know. I've played with um, pulse width in it. I've got like compensation tables. So I've got it real, real close. So if I tell it 30% open, it goes like 30.1, you know, 29.9, 29 so it's, it's well close. I just need to play with it a bit more. But it's taken me, I don't know, four hours today just to go through all the wiring, make sure I'm 100% right, check all the pinouts, check every single pin for continuity, back to the ECU, back to the PDM, everything. Just, yeah, unbelievable. So anyway, back in the game, kinda. Um, this is how she sits currently. I've just got her jacked up, which is, you know, in a garage this big is not fun. I need to get some of them super duper lightweight jacks. Got the throttle body off. Um, I'm just gonna drop the oil because the oil has, um, it's done like loads of dyno miles. So it's been heat cycled shit loads. Um, it's done probably, I don't know how many miles did the car do, 200 maximum on the road. So like normally I wouldn't change it, but I've had the head off, I've completely rebuilt it, new turbo, everything. So oil's gotta go. Um, so I'm just gonna drain that. I'm gonna do like a little hyperlapse. Um, that's gonna go. Then I'm gonna show you my, sorry, I'm fucking melting here. Um, I'm gonna show you my new engine build pre-start um, procedure. So obviously oil the turbo, bits and pieces. Um, I've done all the plugs, plugs are all gapped. Um, yeah, and I'm just gonna go through everything, check it all. I'll put a hyperlapse on um, just because it's well boring if I keep going like, and this is me undoing a 14 mil belt. Um, so I'm just gonna drop the oil, fill it up again. Um, and don't forget if you've got coolers or additional lines or stuff that's not standard, you've got to account for those. Um, so what I typically do is I'll put oil, I'll pull the oil in like normal. So I think it needs four liters or 4.5 liters. And I'll keep checking the dipstick, checking the dipstick on the, on the flat ground. And then I'll pull the plugs so there's no compression. Turn the engine over, boom, 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 boom. get oil into all the lines. You know, if you've got coolers, whatever. Um, remember, if you've got a thermostatic sandwich plate on a cooler setup, I don't run a thermostatic plate. I just have it open purely for the fact that um, doing oil changes and stuff, I haven't got to make sure the thermostat's open. Um, plus, I never ever drive my car hard cold, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but just remember, if you're servicing, you know, dropping your oil, putting oil in, or putting a sandwich plate on, to put an oil cooler in a system. Just remember, if you've got a thermostat in it, it'll be shut if you're doing it cold. So it needs, wherever the thermostat is, you know, whatever whatever the temperature is. Oh, ice cream man. Yeah, so just remember that. So account for that. Um, so because I go through oil quite a lot, because it's, it's a Ford, I will usually order double the amount I need. And I put that in, I have some left over. And then, you know, you can just use it as you use it or whatever. Um, yeah, so also as well, the engine doesn't have any water in it, no coolant, um, because I've changed so much. Um, I'm expecting leaks and bits and pieces, so I just want to get the engine started or try to start it, check all the fuel lines, pressure them up, check the oil lines, pressure them up, try and put power to it, see what happens. If, if I can get it started, fantastic. I've also upscaled the injectors now, so they're 875s instead of 650s. Um, I just need to get it kind of started. I need to progress because at the moment, obviously throttle bodies over here and I, I need to play with all the boost and stuff. So this obviously needs a Mac valve and it's got 14 uh, PSI spring in it. 
so I need to mount the Mac valve and bits and pieces, but none of that. I uh, also need to put a vacuum on this, so this is just 45 PSI static. So for starting the car, but no boost, that'll be fine. But obviously it needs a boost reference as the inlet manifold pressure increases. That needs to increase to compensate, to add PSI to match. Um, yeah, that's about it. Wish me luck. It's like 6.30 on a Saturday night. It's been 30 degrees all day and I've been under the car. We wouldn't do anything different though, would we? Mm. That's how thirsty I am. I need a drink first. I've got a frothy mouth. Alright guys, just drain the oil. Come out quite nice to be honest. Didn't look too bad. I'm gonna give it the old feel. Didn't feel too bad. I'll put a um later on I'll drop it through like a coffee filter and just have a look for particulates and bits. Um just as a this is just what I do. I always put a magnetic sump plug in and um I I don't know, I'm always pushing things, so I like to check for wear and bits and pieces. I've also had um, when I bought this car, the engine was sort of sabotaging, had loads of crap in the sump. Um, so I put one of these in, and the magnet in them is super strong. Um, that's probably stainless. You know what I mean? It's pretty, it's pretty good, sort of supports itself. Um, so what I do is I normally just put a brand new one in each time, because uh, I don't like to risk the threads. If I, so what I'll do is I'll put that in now, pull the oil out, and then dig the other one out and I'll inspect it. I'll go through, make sure there's no you know, lumps of metal on it, bits and pieces. Um, but I just think it's always good practice to at least you know, have a brand new one to go back in and then clean the other one up, put a new washer on it. I think they use like aluminium crush washers here, um, but you could use a copper one or whatever. Uh, I don't use any sort of sealant on it because um, you shouldn't really have to, especially if you've got that, that should provide you with a decent seal. Um, and I also don't want it to be something that I really struggle to get undone. So typically, um, I'll just use that, put it out. So I'll just set this up again, get it going, and see what the score is. Peace out. Use a funnel. It's always tricky. One of these ones, they normally got a little gauze filter in them, but I've I've lost that. No idea where it goes. But that is a perfect fit for that. So anyway, just gonna pour the oil in. I'll keep checking it, checking it, checking it. The old dippy stick. And then obviously I'll crank the engine, pour some oil in the turbo. So I'll just disconnect the turbo feed and I'll pour enough through until I see it coming out the um out the drain in the bottom. And I'll turn the engine over again. No plugs, no spark, no injection. Just to um, just to pump the oil through, just to make sure it's in all the ways, and then uh, getting closer and closer. Pretty exciting. Check your level. Also, if you notice, if you turn. Instead of doing it like this, and then gulping, 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 you turn it sideways, the air pump is on the top and it doesn't gulp. Just a little tip. Oops. So you see there, just off the bottom, so I'll give that just over three meters. I've got needs 4.25 plus I've got the two a tens down to the remote filter when I've got the coolant so I, I think it needs another additional litre maybe or something so which which I get which I get you can see that there sometimes you've got to just let it settle and there's just I'd say it's about a quarter over empty Some more. 
Ah, ben de jön a vörös. Meg a csóval, hogy most legyen szabály. Ez van is. Pump switched off as well because I don't want any pressure in the rail just yet. And I'll just turn it over, brum, 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 just make sure it's all oil filled. Check for leaks. That's number one. Let's get this step by step, closer, closer. We're getting there, boys. school MC. I would do an MC shout out but I don't remember any of their names. Anyway, so this is um, basically running through all the sensors doing all the pre first startup checks. So here you want to like really take your time. Definitely getting a mate to help is imperative and you know if you, if you haven't got a friend I feel sorry for you. I'll find my little violin but you know it's okay whatever. Um, you want to just go through check all your um, temp and pressure sensors. So here we're testing air inlet temp, water temp, uh, oil temp, oil pressure. Um, map is kind of already running, doing its thing. You can sort of see it's just it's telling you that you've basically got 14 and a half psi. That's atmospheric pressure. Um, we're using one of those super duper cheap surface temperature tester machine sensor things and it's we just figured out it's like wildly inaccurate so it's kind of put to question all my previous sensor calibrations but um, I'll probably go back and like recalibrate them all in the future but just to give me like a ballpark figure that's what we've done here um, always turn your engine over if you can while you're putting water in it just to get rid of the air pockets and to get water around to all those different areas obviously do it without the cap on so you've, you've got no pressure in the system um, and just static oil pressure with out the spark plugs in just on the starter motor I think gave me 32 to 34 psi so I'm quite happy with that I think running up to normal um, revs is, is about 80 psi so yeah seems all, all good to check out to uh, first start back again on the microphone you're getting bored of my voice already I know that um, yeah so I set up the GoPro and I let it record for ages so this is me basically doing nothing but what I did, did think I'd do is I'd talk you through what I'm doing in the background and effectively I'm just um, doing loads of checks so in a minute I've got obviously connect the battery do a few other bits and pieces inside the car uh, but really here you want to make sure that you've got a good oil level um, I've already done that you, you want to make sure you've got good water level um, because again it's going to get hot really quick um, if you're tuning it yourself like I'm attempting to do here you want to just make sure that you've obviously got fuel in the car the fuel pumps gonna work um, and just that all your sensor calibrations when you first plug the laptop in is telling you kind of what makes sense um, you know like air pressures air temps water temps all that sort of stuff just because you're gonna to need to look at those on first start just to make sure um, those things are doing the correct things you know obviously you don't want it to get roaring hot straight away or if your oil pressure doesn't move off of um, you know like a really low level or a really high level you've either got a sensor problem which you want to check straight away and shut the engine down or you have a worse problem and you don't have oil pressure and that's you know you want to make sure that for sure um, so yeah I'm just removing bits and pieces that <laughs> I'm an idiot um, yeah you want to just remove everything from around the card so you can just focus on doing the one job you've got to do um, my garage is typically always a shithole as you can see and everyone sort of knows that now but um, it is what it is 
I think I do remove those canisters of oil from the wastegate dump pipe because <laughs> obviously that's a terrible, terrible idea. So what I was saying here is I, I was so ambitious that I was going to turn the key, the car was going to start, it was going to idle perfectly and I was literally going to put it in reverse and drive off the stands and out onto the driveway. I, I think I even moved my daily car out of the way. So um, that's how ambitious I was, that's how much I believed that my little tweaks, my little tap tap tapping on the keyboard was going to have made this car actually do what I thought it was going to do. Um, this complete new setup, I genuinely thought that I had fixed it. Um, but you'll see, there's uh, quite far from the truth. <laughs> Shit, baby. I mean, I might be able to try that out. 